Welcome back. This is Father Moo. Well, it's been a while since I posted a uh, small Eurorack setup video. I had a couple of tweaks going on and I tried some various options, but I couldn't really get the variety of sound I was looking for out of my small Eurorack system until this configuration. In fact, uh, I had four powered modules in it. Uh, I had a phaser and I had a second LFO. And although according to modular grid, I was still within the power parameters of the pod, I wasn't using too much power, the nebulae, which is my primary sampler here, would not boot. So I took those two modules out and I'm left with just three, only two of which are drawing power. But it makes quite a complex little system uh, in terms of sound output. So uh, I started using it on my stream, and I've got a YouTube video up with this content as well. So uh, I just thought I'd break it down briefly for anyone else who's still working on their own small Eurac systems. Uh, mine is a little bit dated maybe, but I think it can still provide some insight. So let's look at it. On the left here, you can see a Dixie 2. This is an oscillator made by IntelliGel. I think it's still in production right now. I'm not sure about that. But I'm not using it as an oscillator. I'm using it as an LFO in this setup. So these uh, black marked ports are all outputs. And you can see the shapes of the different uh, waveforms, LFO waveforms or oscillator waveforms that it's going to output. So it gives you some options, especially on the bottom right there. That very brief blip actually can act as like a... Uh, a gate or a trigger instead of an LFO. So that's quite useful. Then we have uh, the Nebulae. Mine is the version one, bought almost a decade ago. Mine stopped working after a couple years and I removed it. And many years later, my friend told me, hey, you can get those repaired by Qubit for free. And I said, really? And sent it off to them. And lo and behold, they repaired it for free and it works now. The only difference between mine and the newer version is that mine doesn't have any input, so I can't record live from my system in real time. It doesn't matter to me at all. I use this little uh, white thing here. The oblong thing is a tiny USB stick drive, and I put my samples on that, and when it boots up, it loads them and then plays them back. And you can see there's a variety of knobs here that allows you to uh, adjust how the sample plays back. This is They call it a granular sampler, but you can do a lot of interesting just looping sounding stuff. It doesn't always sound like the sample has been cut into tiny pieces, more like uh, manageable chunks, I would say. So essentially, the, uh, the various inputs that you can see there at the bottom and on the left here as well, uh, the outputs of the LFO can just go directly into them. Or of course, we have the R2R, which is really a CV processor, at least how I use it. So I send one LFO in there to I.O. and then take the outs marked 128, 64, the other outputs, and send those into the nebulae for slightly weirder LFOs. So basically the ones you get with the Dixie are six very normal and predictable shapes. If that's not weird enough for you, you stick one of them in the R2R to use that instead. So one of the patches I was even able to use was, if you look here, where it says next file, uh, you can send a trigger in there, that's what it's expecting, and it'll click over to the next sample on the USB stick. So in one of my self-generating patches, I had the, uh, the bottom right output here, the, the thing that looks like a squished square wave on the bottom right, and sending it directly into next file. So, and by setting the LFO to a relatively low speed, that meant it would play one sample for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then it would send that trigger and start a new sample playing. So in between like you twisting the knobs and uh, the Dixie giving you modulation and just the fact that a sampler can be loaded up with a bunch of weird sounds, uh, you can actually get an am amazing amount of depth out of, well, basically three modules here. I think this is the 48 pod X, but as you can see, I'm only using slightly more than 50% of it. So you might be able to get a, a pod 30 or something, if, especially if you didn't need the R2R, 
and just uh, build a tiny system like this. In the modern world, you'd probably be getting the new Nebulae, and instead of the Dixie 2, you could use uh, essentially any LFO. You could use the DivKid 1 OCHD, or you could use uh, Pamela's, any one of the Pamela's workouts. Those would all be fine, and uh, that'll give you a lot of uh, variety there. So, uh, yeah, in, a, in the next video or in another video on my stream, you'll be able to see this little system in action and uh, hear the weird sounds for itself, to all done just while I was streaming live on Twitch and edited down some of the most interesting bits to, to share. So take a look at that if you want to hear how this sounds. And if you ever th have other thoughts about uh, the journey through small Eurorack systems that you're going on, I'd love to see your feedback or comments uh, below this video. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you all next time. Father Moo out.